Welcome to the Snowy Hydro Employee Induction. Today we're going to introduce you to the Snowy Hydro Safety Management System, Risk Management Procedures and introduce some of the unique hazards you may encounter when working on our sites. At Snowy Hydro we have a shared belief and commitment that all incidents are preventable. To help achieve this, everyone working at Snowy Hydro must follow established safe work procedures when doing your job, make sure your actions do not put yourself or anyone else at risk, and constantly assess what risks might be present and work out what controls need to be put in place. No matter what part of our business you work in, together we all have a part to play in ensuring Snowy Hydro is a safe place to work. Whilst at work, everyone is responsible and accountable for their own actions. Your safety and the safety of others depend on the decisions you make when going about your work. Snowy Hydro expects that all workers are fit for work. What this means is that you're not fatigued, detailed in procedure SP24-69 fatigue management, suffering from an injury or illness to the point where it impacts your capacity to work, or impaired in any way by drugs or alcohol. Before we dive into the procedures, rules and expectations any deeper, we're going to take a minute here to think about why these procedures are in place. Take a moment to think about the top four things you value in life. For most people, this centres around their family and friends, followed by hobbies and interests they have outside of work. If you or a mate were injured at work, how might that affect your ability to do the things you enjoy and be with the people you love? We want Snowy Hydro to be a safe place to work so you're able to be with the people you love and continue doing the things that are important to you. Let's start by doing something you'll always have to do before setting foot on any Snowy Hydro operational site, putting on the appropriate personal protective equipment, or PPE. Core 4. As you've learned, we all have a part to play in ensuring Snowy Hydro is a safe place to work. As you progress through this induction, you'll learn more about the four pillars of our safety leadership program, which work together to form a comprehensive safety system. Together, they're known as the core four and are comprised of the Switch On program, which focuses on safety leadership, our risk management process, known as Right to Start, our safety observation process, known as All Learn by Promoting Safety, or ALPS, and Zero In, our incident investigation process. Later on in your induction program, you'll participate in our face-to-face -face Switch On program. As we progress today, we'll go over the basic principles of Right to Start, ALPS and Zero In, but first we're going to have a look at our life-saving rules here at Snowy Hydro. We have eight life-saving rules which clearly identify the controls for a specific critical hazard. Let's not beat around the bush here. These rules are in place to keep people alive. The life-saving rules closely align to the most common causes of workplace fatality in Australia. These rules must be followed and are absolutely non-negotiable. These rules are the key to the safety of everyone at Snowy Hydro and you'll be assessed on them at the end of the induction, so pay special attention here. Life-saving rule number one. Always wear your seatbelt on all equipment where fitted. No matter how slow or how far you're travelling, or if you're just backing the vehicle up a metre, your seatbelt must be on. Here's a little bit of history for you. During construction, the Snowy Mountains Authority introduced forward-thinking safety measures including the compulsory wearing of seatbelts. We were one of the first Australian organisations to implement this safety procedure back in the 1960s. Life-saving rule number two. Always ensure effective controls are in place where you could fall 1.8 metres or more. When working at heights, even seemingly small ones can pose a major hazard. Any drop more than 1.8 metres in height requires the use of effective controls such as fall restraint devices and anchorage points. Before any work at heights is commenced, you'll receive appropriate training and have the necessary competency for the task. Refer to SP24-52 Safe Work at Heights for more information. Life-saving rule number three. Always prove equipment and plant is de-energised prior to commencing work. To prove plant is de-energised, you must ensure physical verification that energy, including stored energy, 
has been removed and secured from the equipment so it cannot be restored. Some examples of energy sources at snowy hydro sites include hydraulic fluid under pressure, electricity, natural gas, water and compressed air. Proving is not only important for your safety but also the safety of others around you. Life-saving rule number four. Always ensure effective controls are in place to prevent impact from falling objects. Impacts from falling objects are in the top five causes of death in the workplace in Australia. There are a number of ways to effectively control for this hazard, including barricades to restrict worker movement or the use of signage or spotters to warn workers. Life-saving rule number five. Never attend work while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Even a small amount of drugs or alcohol can affect your performance and capability to perform tasks at work. As we talked about briefly before, Snowy Hydro is a drug and alcohol-free workplace. You're required to maintain a 0.00% blood alcohol concentration, BAC, at all times when on site. And both saliva testing for drugs and breath testing for alcohol can be conducted on employees and contractors at any time. If you're taking medication, prescribed or otherwise, you're required to notify your supervisor if it has the potential to affect your ability to work. Life-saving rule number six. Never enter a confined space unless you have a valid confined space entry permit and are appropriately trained and have the necessary competency for the task. Snowy Hydro has many confined spaces in and around our various work sites, including pits, water intake and outtake structures, tanks and penstocks, just to name a few. The confined space registers for each Snowy Hydro site contain the full list of all confined spaces. If relevant to your role, your supervisor will review the confined space register with you in more detail as part of your site induction. You can also refer to SP24-59 Confined Spaces Procedure for more information. Life-saving rule number seven. Never place yourself under a suspended load or lift a load over any person. This refers to someone intentionally or unintentionally moving under a load that is suspended, such as an overhead crane or a forklift. For the purposes of this rule, equipment that is lifted then effectively secured by pins or chocks so that it cannot move is not considered suspended. Life-saving rule number eight. Never operate plant and equipment unless competent and authorized. This refers to any plant and equipment where recognized competencies are required for operation, such as forklifts or overhead cranes. We take our life-saving rules very seriously here at Snowy Hydro. Any breach will be investigated and disciplinary action up to and including termination may be an outcome of the investigation. This is not just confined to employees and contractors. Any supervisor, manager or leader who directs or condones the breaking of a life-saving rule will be considered to have breached the rule themselves. Now that we've been through our eight key life-saving rules, we're going to go over some general requirements for a safer workplace. Access rules. Access rules provide the general requirements when accessing, working with or testing operational apparatus and apply in operational areas. Your supervisor will advise you if you're required to undertake further training in access rules. Manual handling. Manual handling is about more than just bending your knees when you lift. At Snowy Hydro, we want everyone to be a safe mover. And later on, as part of your induction to the business, you'll be invited to attend a Safe Moves training session where you'll learn the principles of manual handling in detail. For now, let's cover the basics. Eliminate the need to handle something yourself when possible by using a mechanical aid such as a trolley or a hoist. Be constantly aware of your posture. You should aim to always have an inward curve in the lower part of your spine. You can do this if you lift a weight like a weight lifter does by bending your knees and sticking out your bum. Avoid bending or reaching. When you have to get down low, try to kneel or squat rather than bend from the back. When moving something, push rather than pull. Limit overhead work. Where you can, arrange items or use safety steps or work platforms so you can work below shoulder height. And last but not least, rotate tasks regularly. 
Whether it's prolonged computer use or repetitive physical tasks, it's important not to continue doing the same thing for too many hours at once. Office ergonomics. You can think of office ergonomics as proper manual handling of your body. It can sound silly saying that working at a computer can be a risk, but the reality is if it's not done in a proper manner, you can end up with debilitating injuries like carpal tunnel syndrome or a chronically sore neck or back. In order to ensure you're comfortable at your desk, there are a few key things to keep in mind. It's important to adjust your workstation to make it work for you personally. A well-adjusted workstation will help you maintain good posture throughout the day. Avoid typing or using the mouse for long periods of time. Ensure you alternate tasks regularly. Remember to change your posture from sitting to standing regularly. An easy way to do this is to develop a habit of standing up when you take a phone call or walking over to talk to a colleague close by. If your work involves a lot of computer usage, we recommend you complete the Office Ergonomics iLearn package, which shows you what adjustments you should make to your workstation, as well as install the WorkPay software on your computer, which provides you with reminders of when to take rest breaks and examples of what stretches you can perform at your desk. Asbestos-containing materials, ACM. Asbestos may pose a serious hazard. If not properly identified and maintained, it can pose a very real risk to workers. Within Snowy Hydro, the location of asbestos-containing material, or ACM, is detailed in the asbestos register for each worksite. If you're not familiar with a site, always check the asbestos register before commencing work. The Snowy Hydro Asbestos Management Plan details our requirements for the identification, registration and monitoring of asbestos-containing material. If you see something which you suspect may be asbestos-containing material but isn't labelled or listed on the asbestos register, treat it accordingly and report it to your supervisor. Chemicals For any chemicals used on a Snowy Hydro site, the Safety Data Sheet, SDS, will be readily available via the ChemWatch system on our intranet. The Safety Data Sheet details the precautions you need to take when handling and storing chemicals. If your work role requires it, your supervisor will show you how to access the ChemWatch system. All chemicals must be stored appropriately with proper labelling and correctly disposed of. When handling or working with chemicals, the appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, as detailed in the safety data sheet, must be worn. Electrical work. Electrical work is only to be undertaken by qualified and competent persons. As per life-saving rule number three, you must always prove equipment and plant is de-energised prior to commencing work, and all electrical power tools and leads must be tested and tagged before use. While we're on the subject of electricity, exposure to electric and magnetic fields at some snowy hydro sites pose a risk if too much time is spent in the area. Areas of high field are signposted, and for some areas, time limits for exposure may apply. If you have an implanted electronic device such as a pacemaker, you must speak to your supervisor to determine what operational areas will be no-go zones for you. Travel As mentioned earlier, travelling around the various snowy hydro sites can be hazardous. In the snowy mountains area, rapidly changing weather conditions and wildlife such as kangaroos and wombats, which are most active at the start and end of the day, can pose a hazard and leave you unprepared for a potentially dangerous situation. Before commencing your journey, always consider whether you should postpone if the conditions might be hazardous and take the necessary precautions. Always undertake a basic pre-travel check of your vehicle. Check all fluid levels, including fuel, oil and coolant. Check wheel and tyre conditions, as well as tyre pressure. Check lights, windscreens and wipers. Check all equipment is secure. Check operation of Snowy Hydro Radio and check for correctly fitting snow chains if the conditions require them. Establishing a communication plan with a nominated person, including your travel route and estimated time of arrival, is a must to ensure people are aware of your whereabouts in case something does go wrong. We all learn by promoting safety, ALPS. The All Learn by Promoting Safety, ALPS program is designed to encourage participation in the safety program through the recognition of safe and unsafe behaviours. Conducting behaviour-based observations allows us to recognise people for safe work behaviours. 
as well as identifying at-risk behaviours and providing an opportunity to discuss possible improvement options with courageous conversations. Further ALPS training will be arranged for you during your induction to the business. Everyone has a right to start. We expect everyone to apply a proactive risk management approach to their work each and every day. There are a few basic principles that will help you achieve this and make your work environment safer for everyone. When planning a job, consider what hazards exist and how they might be controlled. Do this by undertaking a risk assessment process, which may include using procedures, competencies, or the development of a work method statement. When commencing the job, assess whether the controls in place are still adequate and continually assess the effectiveness of controls as the work progresses. It's very possible that the conditions have changed since the plan was drawn up and additional controls may be needed. Within Snowy Hydro, we call this a start card discussion. Zero in on incidents. We encourage all incidents and near hits, no matter how minor, to be reported to your supervisor as soon as practicable. Reporting a minor incident can sometimes seem like a hassle, but it's very possible that knowledge of a previous minor incident will prevent a more severe incident from taking place in the future. Incidents, including safety, environmental and quality, are classified according to the incident classification matrix, which is broken up into four incident levels, level 1, level 2, level 3 and level 4. In order to thoroughly learn from and prevent recurrences, all incidents classified as level 2 or higher will be investigated, with the investigation protocol varying dependent on which incident classification level it falls under. Depending on your role, you may be required to undertake further training into Zero In, our incident investigation protocols. Safety consultation and communication. In case you haven't noticed yet, safety is pretty important here at Snowy Hydro. To keep everyone up to date on everything that's happening, we use safety change notices and safety alerts, which are published following serious incidents or near hits. They're posted on the intranet as well as communication boards in various work locations and will also be discussed during team meetings or other local forums. Your supervisor will advise you of the local safety consultation arrangements for your worksite as part of your site induction. To ensure worksites are as safe as they can be, the following items are not permitted on any Snowy Hydro worksites. 9-inch angle grinders, Stanley-type carton knives without auto-retract blades, and circular saw workbenches with inadequate guarding. Working at Snowy Hydro. Snowy Hydro is committed to assisting employees who are injured or ill at work. If you're injured at work or have an illness which might impact your ability to work safely, you must report this to your supervisor as soon as possible. We have a comprehensive early intervention program to assist employees in getting access to medical and health services as needed. We also offer support to return to work for both work-related and non-work-related injuries and illnesses. We also provide regular educational seminars facilitated by health professionals on a variety of health topics, health promotion initiatives throughout the year, such as on-site skin cancer screening clinics, and free confidential counselling services to employees and their immediate families through our Employee Assistance Programme. During your local site induction, your supervisor will advise you of the location of emergency exits and evacuation assembly points, the location of first aid facilities and security management, and site access procedures, such as the location of sign-in boards. Your supervisor can also provide you with more information on our Energize at Snowy Hydro program later in your induction. Have you been paying attention? Now we've just got a few questions for you to answer before you're finished. Don't worry, they'll be easy if you've been paying attention.